Where's First Lady Melania Trump when her husband is so often front and center? A clearer picture emerges from correspondent Tracy Smith in our Sunday morning cover story. I will fight to protect you. I am your president of law and order. Recently, while President Trump was talking law and order. They've got to get tougher. They've got to get tougher. First Lady Melania Trump was tweeting about healing and peace. So it's voluntary. You don't have to do it. And back in they April, when President Trump declined to wear a face mask. But, uh, I don't think I'm going to be doing it. His wife put one on and urged others to do the same. It is another recommended guideline to keep us all safe. OK, it's not exactly a palace coup, and some might say not nearly enough to keep her husband's more controversial actions in check. But either way, according to a new book, Melania Trump has more influence than you might think. This is very different than the narrative that some people have painted that she is trapped. Oh, oh makes her crazy to say she's poor Melania trapped. She's not. She is smart, independent, she will decide what she wants to do and what she doesn't want to do. Melania Trump, thank you very much. Pulitzer Prize winner Mary Jordan is the author of The Art of Her Deal, published by Simon & Schuster, a Viacom CBS company. Of course you asked to interview Melania for this book. What happened? Basically no reply. The Trumps, both of them, make people who are around them sign non-disclosure agreements. They also, I quickly learned, told people that knew Melania when she was young, when she was a model, to not talk. The White House dismisses the book as fiction, but Jordan says that after several years and more than 100 interviews, a clearer picture emerged of a woman who grew up dreaming of a life far away from her native Sejanitsa, Slovenia. She's a girl who grew up in a really small town and couldn't wait to get out. She told everyone that. I mean, everyone I talked to in Slovenia said she couldn't wait to get out of this town. She wanted to be where the action is. At first, young Melania wanted to study architecture. But she was persuaded that modeling was a better option, and she found success doing mostly print work in Europe and later in New York City. She wed Donald Trump in 2005, became a U.S. citizen in 2006, and eventually sponsored her mother and father, Amalia and Victor, to be U.S. citizens as well. And how about chain migration? How about that? Somebody comes in, he brings his mother and his father. In fact, just days after their son-in-law made a speech removed. blasting so-called chain migration, Melania's parents took the oath and, in effect, became chain migrants themselves. Politics aside, both are said to dote on their 14-year-old grandson, Baron, who's learned to speak their language. So Baron Trump speaks Slovenian, is very close to the father. Both her parents spent a huge amount of time in the White House living there. There's a unit within the, the family unit, and it's Melania, her mother, her father, and Baron. And they all speak Slovenian, and it's kind of interesting. The Secret Service has no idea what they're saying. And Donald Trump doesn't have a good idea of what they're saying a lot of the time when they're speaking. No, Slovenian. and he has said it annoys them sometimes because he has no idea what they're saying. But Jordan also says Melania has no problem making herself understood. She's quite influential, and I think people have underestimated her big time. For instance, when Donald Trump was trying to figure out who to pick as his vice presidential candidate, he brought Chris Christie, Newt Gingrich, and Mike Pence, and had her vet them. She spent two days with the Pences, and her advice to him was, you know, pick Pence because he'll be content to be number two. The other ones won't. They'll be angling for the number one job. But while Melania has towed the Trump company line in the past, like the false birther claims about Obama, it's tough to tell what she thinks about his most recent decisions. I will deploy the United States military and quickly solve the problem. Like advocating the use of force against people protesting the killing by police of George Floyd. So if people don't like what's going on with this administration, how much can they blame her? So this is a really tricky question, but I think most people that I've talked to about that say, you're not really to blame for what your husband does, but I do think there's a special responsibility when you're in the White House. You know, it's not just 
a regular spouse. You have a platform. Now, I know that she's using it in ways that we don't know because I keep hearing about all the influence and the advice she's given him. She doesn't do it publicly, but it's, you know, maybe it would even be worse. For those who don't like Trump, maybe who knows what else he would be doing um, if she weren't whispering in his ear. I still think that most Americans don't think they know the real Melania Trump. Katherine Jellison teaches history at Ohio University. So is it kind of important to know where the first lady stands? Because she does have the president's ear. I think pretty consistently in the modern era, first ladies have been sounding boards for their husbands and occasionally have weighed in on policy matters. Certainly uh, Mrs. Clinton did, Mrs. Carter did. So I think the American people want to know something about the family life of a president or a would-be president at the time of a presidential campaign. Of course, a defining moment in the 2016 campaign Hello, how are you? was the infamous Hi. Access Hi. Hollywood Terrific. tape incident. I think that was the moment that she had the most power. You know, Trump is all about leverage and power, and that was the moment that Melania really came into her own. You know, I'm automatically attracted to beautiful. I just start kissing them. Like this tape man. from an Access Hollywood shoot, which surfaced a month before the 2016 election, you can do anything. Captured Trump talking about women in the most vulgar, offensive ways. He was saying that because he's a star, he can grab any woman, and was using pretty lewd language. And uh, you know, if Melania didn't back him up, if she walked away right then, um, he was toast. At around the same time, Jordan writes, Melania was starting to renegotiate her prenuptial agreement. Because she had wanted to do that during the campaign, no dummy, and she picked the right moment to try to get a better deal out of him. And when she delayed her move to the White House, Jordan says that gave her even more leverage. What did she get in the new prenup? I don't know the exact details, but what I'm hearing from multiple sources is she moved in at the right time and got, and got what she wanted. Of course, at 15 years, President Trump's marriage to the First Lady has outlasted both of his previous unions. He may call himself a great negotiator, but in Melania, it seems he's met his match. Is this a, is it a loving marriage or is it a business deal? What I'm told is that there is more there than people realize. Yes, they live, I think, what many people think is bizarrely separate lives, separate bedrooms, you know, they have separate routines. But she's fascinating because we've never had somebody who only arrived in America at the age of 26, and 20 years later she's in the White House. It's, 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 a, it's quite a story.